Hi friends. Yeah, so I accidentally made a cannon. In this video I'll be upgrading the burner on my foundry to something that's much more awesome. Currently the burner part of my homemade foundry uses a central heating boiler siphon nozzle. This siphon nozzle uses a stream of fast rushing air to pull oil through a small hole where the fast moving air atomizes the fuel into tiny droplets which makes it easier to burn. This was a good starter burner for me as it was simple to make with no welding but it has some distinct disadvantages. It's not very controllable. The air pressure is the only thing you can change and the fuel consumption is directly related to the air pressure used as it's the siphon effect of the air rushing through the nozzle that actually pulls the fuel through. So if you want a quicker to heat furnace you kind of have to change the nozzle. It's noisy. Very, very noisy. I have to have my largest air compressor running nearly constantly. And the nozzle uses about 25 PSI while it's getting going and can be up to 60 to 70 PSI at full tilt. The compressed air going to the burner is also quite damp and this water content makes it hard to attain high temperatures quickly because squirting damp air into a hot furnace is a great way to cool it down. It's also for this reason I think I've been struggling to get to bronze pouring temperatures. It does eventually get there, but the final 200 degrees might take an hour at least. So from room temperature to bronze pouring temperature might be two hours in total. And finally, it's wearing out my air compressor. It's a very useful tool to me and I don't want it to prematurely age. I think I need more power and more control over the air and fuel separately and I'd like to get to bronze pouring temperature as quickly as possible and maybe even try melting some iron one day and to do that I'll need a much more ferocious burner. I've been reading Colin Peck's book on his cast iron furnace and he uses an oil drip system but I wanted a simple introduction to an oil drip burner. Colin Peck's is amazing but it's a little complicated so I did a bit of googling and there's a hell of a lot of oil drip burners on YouTube. I found a brilliant video by a channel called Oil Burner, there's a link in description showing a fearsome looking thing made out of what looks like a gas canister. It's amazing. What I think is happening here is a steady stream of fuel is entering the hot chamber where it gets vaporized by the heat and blown around by the fast moving air and is ignited. The pressure from the blower is keeping all the heat and flames flowing towards the foundry. And it just so happens I have a spare gas canister and some scrap metal that might be good for this project. Hooray! The beauty of this design is it's pretty simple, but there is some welding involved and I can control the fuel and air separately to fine tune it. It should also be faster to get to bronze pouring temperatures as I can just keep increasing the amount of fuel entering the system. And potentially it could be quieter too because there's no noisy compressor in the background. And because I won't be using the compressor, I won't be tethered to airlines. So theoretically all I need is a mains power supply to run it. So I'll need to make the steel burner body, an air system and a fuel system. Let's do it. After going through some of the various pipe options I have in my scrap metal pile, I choose this humongous thing for my exit tube. Now regular viewers will know I'm the world's best welder, so I'm going to have some real trouble with this build. I've got to weld two cylinders to another large cylinder at various angles. This is going to be horrible. Luckily there's a superb online tube joint pattern generating tool, link in description. But I like to make things really difficult for myself and I didn't even Google for such a thing until after I'd spent ages making the hole for the huge exhaust tube. Lol, what a plonker. So this tube joint pattern generator is amazing. You give it all the tube details and then you can print the pattern it gives you. You stick the pattern to the tubes and use it to cut the correct profiles. Theoretically, this should make a perfect join. It's a little tricky with thick walled steel though, and it also doesn't make you better at welding. It also doesn't help you if you stick the template on upside down. I decided to use this thick walled scaffold tube for the air fuel inlet pipe as it's a great fit with my air hose. This air fuel inlet pipe needs a smaller pipe welded to it for the fuel to drip down from. I angle it at 45 degrees. I weld up the little tube to the larger air fuel inlet tube, then I weld that larger tube to the main gas canister body. Now I weld on the huge exit tube. 
And that's the main body done. Hooray! Not too shabby. Actually quite shabby. Really is the best welding I've ever done. Right, now let's tackle the air system. About a year ago, I got an old Dyson vacuum cleaner on eBay for a fibre, and I dismantled it to get the awesome fan motor housing out of it. I've added a 3D printed cover for the inlet end to stop large things getting sucked in. I reused the original Dyson outlet cover that fits the fan motor housing, but the air exit tube is a weird shape, so I make a new outlet in the centre that's circular. I cut a hole the size of my metal air hose tube and 3D print a small collar for it for extra strength and then epoxy this new outlet tube to the old Dyson outlet cover. I've wired one of those cheap AC motor speed controllers to the Dyson motor so I can vary the airflow it produces. I've used these on several projects and they're brilliant value. I get my air hose ready with some Jubilee clips and now it's time to fit the modified Dyson cover to the fan motor housing to make it a complete sealed unit. After trying some Jubilee clips I just decide to epoxy the cover on. Now all I need to do is block the old air exit tube with this 3D printed cover I've made. There. All done. Okay, I'm desperate to try what I've done so far, so I set up a little test outside. Quite sensible for once. I got a tiny peristaltic pump on eBay years ago, and I'll be using it to push a steady amount of fuel into the burner. Unfortunately it's a bit leaky, but we'll go ahead and test anyway. Here you can see the fuel, in my case diesel, dribble down from above into the air inlet tube. I haven't switched it on yet. I attached the flexible air hose to the fan outlet, and now we're ready to go for the first test. Whoop whoop! So it's on low. I don't want to stress it too much yet because uh, obviously it's still gluing. What I'm going to do is I'm going to light some cardboard, pop it in there, see if we can get it going that way. noise it's gonna make a noise I have no idea if this is gonna work yeah was a light insane I wasn't ready for that at all right there's flame in there let's try that again right let's get this all focused up I think I need to point it this way a bit more I've never seen I've never seen anything like it okay right stop here we go there is flame in there So as a first test, I think that was an awesome success. 
I need to get the diesel flow correct. Once the canister is hot, the diesel is almost instantly vaporized and burned, so it very quickly goes out if the diesel flow rate isn't maintained. But that also means the heat in the flames produced is very closely proportional to the amount of fuel being put in, so it's very controllable. There only seems to be a few seconds lag, which is brilliant. So after a few hours of playing around, it's time to figure out a plan for the fuel system. I really like the idea of an electric pump for the fuel for a couple of reasons. The main one being a very controllable flow can be achieved. Also, if I get a power cut, which happens quite a lot where I live, then the fuel supply will stop at the same time as the air supply from the fan. So it's nice and safe. The flames will just go out once any remaining fuel is burnt off. I feel a gravity power drip system might be asking for trouble with all our intermittent electricity supply. Being a bit stumped when it comes to pumps for fuel, after hours of looking, eventually I come across some small motorbike fuel pumps that might work with my budget. So I try to find the one with the lowest flow rate I can and order one. At the same time, I order some proper fuel hose. Once the little pump arrives, I can see it's quite a nice little unit. You can see here there's even a little fuel filter for the pump. And the whole unit gets submerged in the fuel. It's a very simple device. The pump flow rate can be altered perfectly with the voltage. So it's 10 volts, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, five, four and a half, 4.2, and then barely a trickle is 3.7 volts. Great little pump. I've also decided to add a fatter fuel pipe in case I ever want to add a second fuel line or a gas line in the future. I'm running it at five volts and this is what it looks like. So that's the pump pump, lovely and quiet. I've lit a fire in here, like a wood fire. get the um, whole thing going. There's like a few bits of wood in there that I've lit. Here is the furnace going full tilt, but with the fuel supply being switched off and on intermittently. Now it's time to modify the foundry so it can fit that humongous tube into it. The current hole is only 52 millimeters and the new one will need to be over 90 millimeters in diameter.
Now I don't have a drill that big, so using a piece of the humongous scrap pipe and an old blunt SDS drill, I make my own serrated 90mm core drill. I tack weld a larger tube to my foundry to guide the drill and start drilling. The first inch it works really well, but the special refractory cement is extremely hard and soon the teeth have been severely blunted. I end up finishing the hole with my hammer drill, but with the deep cut that's already there, it's surprisingly easy to finish off. Now it's time to test the furnace with the new fuel pump, but this time attached to the foundry. Here I'm powering the little pump with my bench top power supply. It seems to pump the correct amount of fuel for me between 4 and 5 volts. I love this furnace. To tidy things up a bit, I need to get a power supply just for the pump. A bench top supply is great, but it's too large and I need it for other projects. I found this one on Amazon. It's fully digital and adjustable. You can program its output voltage and adjust it with the control knob. You can also program it to start at a certain voltage at power up too. So I programmed mine to start at four volts. I 3D print a little housing for the power supply. And mount it to a bit of wood. This can just sit on the diesel tank when it's running. And I'll be able to adjust the voltage on the go with a little control knob. So that's the fuel system sorted. It's finished. At the moment I've got it set for 4.2 volts. Let's turn it on. Great, I can hear that it's going. Yep, it's coming out. So I'm going to put a little bit in the actual tank for a couple of seconds. Well, that's brilliant. Well, so far, so quiet. <laughs> Let's turn on the fan. This is run out at 70. Four point two volts. Point four and out. That's a lot quieter. Here's me doing an experiment to see how fast the furnace gets up to temperature. It's got bronze in it too. Annoyingly I was so concerned with getting temperature readings, I didn't really film the actual furnace much. This few seconds worth is all I have. But as you can see it's running beautifully. So here are the results of the experiment. To cut a long story short, it works really well. I would consider these early fuel pump voltages to be quite low, so if I used more fuel earlier on, it would be even quicker. But I was doing other things like making a mould and taking temperature readings. My mind was all over the place, so I didn't need it to be bleeding edge quick. 
4.2 volts was a good starting voltage, then I just increased the pump voltage as I went. And the fan setting, basically after increasing the fuel, I kept increasing the fan speed until the burn looked complete with little or no smoking. Right, I've got some molten bronze. I've been meaning to do a little test on my new metal design. I've also printed a plate with some test lettering on it because I want to know how these drafted letters will work out. Let's skip straight to the pour. Whoops. Now I partially blame my mum for this. She was staying over for a rare visit and I was keen to show her the pour. So I ran into the house to tell her the pour was in a couple of minutes and I was doing the temperature readings and I was just completely all over the shop and I forgot to weigh down the coke. Oh well, we'll have to see how it goes. That's the first time I've had the cope and the drag separate. Ooh. Still, the whole point was to do a, a test of the furnace and that passed brilliantly. I have no idea what that's going to look like. Excuse the sweat patches, it's very, very hot here. And the furnace is amazing, which means I've swat a lot. Let's have a look. Because I was melting bronze anyway, as a temperature furnace test, I thought I'd do, some, do something with it. And so this is just a bonus extra. If something works, it's worked. But I've never had the bronze pour out. It's because I didn't weight the mold. What is a shame though, is I burnt my uh, melamine white plastic shelf, so that's bad. Okay, here goes. Ooh. Oh, I was expecting a huge puddle. Hmm, maybe it's the cope surface that's gonna be all rubbish because of the lift. That would make more sense because the drag stays on the floor and doesn't lift. Well, that'd be good. This looks good. That looks good. This is obviously a disaster, all this spillage. Oh, let me get rid of this thing. Facing sand is a nice thing. <laughs> this might be all right. So this was a test to see if the Mallorca thing was even um, feasible, that's the word. God, I'm really having senior moments these days. <laughs> that, that blue plate looks amazing. What? I'm gonna look. I'm gonna before I show you. I'm gonna just cut them in, cut the rubbish off. So this this big capital fund worked really well. Um, and even the little one was pretty good. I don't know what was a mistake in regards to the. Um, the mold separation, so I can't say a lot about this experiment except it nearly worked, which is great. This Mal Orcaneers, it looks amazing. We've got the chain, got a little bit of breakage on that link there. That must have been a little 
divot that fell off when I was blowing it maybe. Mallorca looks incredible. The crown isn't too bad. You've got the five jewels and a little bit. Oh my God, I've just noticed that. <laughs> oh my God. That's amazing. And the back. I lost a bit of that link there. Oh, I've got goosebumps. I cannot believe that. Wow, I guess it's because it's really hot, really, really hot metal. Wow. So I thought I might, uh, on the real medals, this, is, this was just a practice, but on the real medals, I might, um, I don't know, maybe put people's names, but that would require even more effort. I've got to print lots of these. Well, I've got to make six of them for a start. So either I'm going to have to print six sets, you know, fronts and backs. It's a bit of a shrinkage in this depression here, but then I guess that could be the, the thing lifting. What a brilliant test. Foundry upgrade. Success. Five out of seven. Perfect. Oh, that's very cool. I might see if I polish just the island and just make this less sharp and come back. And check it out. I haven't really done any polishing, just uh, sanding. And that was just with the wire wheel. How cool is that? I'm exceptionally pleased with this. Um, to be able to do lettering is a big deal, I think. And I think I'd like to put lettering in a lot, of, lot more projects. I'm gonna call it a day. My mum's here and I haven't seen her for a while. Hooray! Whoop whoop, whoop whoop, do the little dance. Love it. So my conclusions are, this is a nice simple furnace but it can be quite ferocious. You do have to be very vigilant at startup. It's very easy to accidentally let too much diesel build up in the canister before it gets hot enough to self vaporize. And with too much diesel in there, once it hits that critical temperature of vaporization, all the diesel comes out pretty much at the same time. So it's not something you can just light and leave. But all in all, I'm very pleased with my new foundry upgrade. With this setup, I'm hoping to find out how much fuel my foundry burner uses. Now, in, in real life, when it's not on a table, this is ground level here. And I've made sure that I've measured when this was on the ground next to the furnace, that the nozzle height, the relative nozzle height, it, well, while it's in the furnace, is this high. So the pump is having to lift it the same amount throughout all these tests. I've marked off on this empty water bottle one litre and two litres. They're quite accurate. I weighed water on a very accurate scale in the house. I've got a little timer here and I've got my power supply set up to start at four volts. So let's go. Three, two, one, go. Really I want to know how the pump voltage relates to the flow rate. The too long didn't read version is that it's an excellent pump for this purpose. Because of the bubbles I'm going to average it between three marks now. 17.34 so I'm going to try 4.2 next. 4.2 volts, 3, 2, 1, Go.
stop. Yeah, if anything that was a touch over. So 123. So this is the voltage, 4.2, 4.4, 4.6, 4.8, 5, 6, 7 and 10. Here's how long it took in minutes. Here's how long in black it took in seconds. And underneath in red is the liters per hour. So four volts was 3.42. I tend to run this burner at 4.2 to start. So that's 4.29, so it's 4.3 liters per hour. And at most I get to is about this level. So here are the results in graph form. This is the voltage range where I'm tending to use it between four and five volts. And as you can see, it's an almost linear relationship between the pump voltage and the number of liters per hour pumped. I tend to start the pump at 4.2 volts, which is 4.29 liters per hour. And by the time I'm ready to pour, I'm usually at 4.8 volts, which is um, 8.35 liters per hour. Now I did do tests beyond five volts. Let's have a look at those. Right, so five volts is down here now. I've zoomed out. And as you can see, it's almost perfectly straight. Taking it all the way up to 10 volts, which is insane, it pumps at 43.4 liters per hour, which is crazy. But it just goes to show what a good pump it is. Thank you for watching. Here's another close up of that letter test I just did. Please thumbs up, subscribe, hit that stupid bell, all that good stuff. My next video should be me trying to make the six medals for my holiday trip. And I don't have much time left, so I really need to get on with that. Bye. That's so lame. I really need a better sign off. Bye. No. See ya. <laughs>